Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dorothy May Mercer speaking to you from Talk Story TV. We have a very exciting and interesting uh, guest tonight to talk with him a little bit about dreams and interpretations of dreams. And this man has really been around. He graduated from McGill University, and he spent 20 years as director of the Dreams Foundation. And uh, then he worked as a singer and a songwriter, and he's used his dreams in an interesting way to develop them into songs. And so he's become an expert in great demand by the movie industry, he's helped uh, Fortune 500 companies, he's put on interviews like this one, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred as many, he's kind of lost count I think, but he's appeared on the Discovery Channel on ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, and now he's appearing on Talk Story TV with you. So we are really honored to have him with us tonight. And perhaps he can help us a little bit with our own dreams, maybe a few tips on how to avoid those nightmares that you have and what to do if you have that special dream that you can't quite put your finger on what that means. So I would like to introduce you to my guest. His name is Craig Sim Webb. But as you can see, he likes to go by TC. So welcome to the program, TC. It's nice to have you here. Oh, well, I usually go by Craig Sim Webb. Those are my, uh, I guess, original birth initials there. Uh -huh. So I just uh, use them occasionally here and there when I want to go a little more incognito, like on Uvu here. Okay, so Craig but, uh, Sim Thanks for having me on, Dorothy. <laughs> you want to take that intro again? <laughs> no, thank you. I think the people got it on the first try. We want to. They get understand, you. right? <laughs> can, Great. Can you tell us about how you got into this dream interpretation thing? It sounds interesting. Well, my journey's been uh, an interesting one. I guess it starts off with uh, Greg here as a physicist and a scientist and you know studying very objective worldly provable facts and the nuts and bolts of things and how things work i had that question you know how does the universe work mm -hmm. and then i guess part way through my degree i ended up on a whitewater rafting trip and as luck would have it uh, i sort of fell off the back of the raft and got stuck under the raft without much breath you know and there I was kind of stuck under the raft you know fight and flight cold fall water lots of silt and swirling energy there so I couldn't really see didn't know where to come out to get air and all of a sudden all my fight and flight kind of stress and anxiety dissolved and just became the single simple thought wow I guess I'm dying right now and you know, what was kind of surprising, I guess, more after the fact, but even in the moment, I remember being aware of it, was there was no more fear, no more struggle, no more grasp, gasp for air, any of that. Just it was just this question. really rich peace. Yeah. Yeah, really quiet peace. And then, I guess the guide pulled me. I sort of don't remember the exact scenario. It's sort of like a cut to next scene in my memory. But I, I was back on the raft, rafting most of the rest of the day as normal. Except for that rich piece, maybe I uh, bit off a little bit of the fear of death or something under there, I don't know. But uh, I seem to be alive and well. But I did notice that the next few weeks, and especially the whole time after that, I started remembering up to about 10 dreams a day. Wow, it's quite a few. You know how they disappear by the time you've had breakfast or your shower? They're kind of like gentle memories, right? Unless you get used yeah. to it. 
you forget them. Yeah, if you make it like a mental muscle and work it out, uh, you can have a little more recall. But we can, we can give some folks, uh, everybody, some tips today. But for me, that was pretty unusual. I had maybe one dream a month before that. And I wasn't against them or super skeptical, but I just wasn't really interested or never attended to it. You know, I was a scientist. Mm -hmm. But now I can say one of me is a scientist. I'm not stuck in that kind of linear identity anymore. And I keep a loose id. <laughs> I get a little more lucid. And I, uh, I've added in what I now call subjective science, lots of these very interesting first-person experiences that dreams became because I started having lucid dreams, you know, conscious dreams where I realized, uh-oh, life is just one station on a larger dial. There's lots of different parts of me who live in other realms or other states outside of the physical senses. So that was a shocker. And then I started having premonition dreams about events that would come true and pretty rare events. And... And I would tell people before, so provable stuff. You ever had those kind of precognitive dreams? I'm not good at that, at that kind of thing. I've, had a, I've done a lot of dream interpretation myself, but nothing as much as you have done. I have enough of a knowledge to kind of grasp where you're coming from and what you're talking about. But, All right. Um, I've been able to uh, do some healing things, but as far as preparation, oh, no, not everybody has every gift, you know? No, it's pretty common, though. Is it? I've done some research and found that about two out of three people at some point uh, acknowledge having dreamt the future fairly accurately oh. in their life. So that's pretty common. Well, I see what you're saying. I, I guess I was talk, thinking you were talking about having it happen oftentimes. But most everybody has at some point. once or twice during their life. Um, with me, it was like when a close friend died or my, when my father died, I, I was aware. Yeah. And, and, but sure, think, big emotional events. Well, I think he was on his deathbed, and I knew when it happened. Later found out, yes, that was the right time, and it was as if he had visited me before his spirit left. Okay. That's okay. So tell and it brought you, I guess it brought you a nice peace too, right? Yeah. So kind of now, knowing that it was the right time and all that. I've had this sense of peace feeling, but as far as uh, thinking that you might be dying, I I had a spell not too long ago where I I sort of fainted, and when I fell down on the ground, okay, I thought, wow. you know, I might be dying. <laughs> and then I didn't die. Okay, that sounds really. familiar. <laughs> But, no, at the time, it was just kind of matter of fact, you know, well, guess this might be it. So tell us what happened yeah. then. How long did this piece last? Well, uh, I started having what I sort of call my kidnapping. I got kidnapped by dreams away from normalcy. <laughs> And I guess it's still lasting, if you're going to use that phrase. But I did do about seven years of more personal explorations, introspective, lots of reading and learning, because I didn't know anything about uh, sort of subjective experiments, science, or even any of these more out there things that uh, I was starting to experience and, and read about. And then eventually I realized I want to bring some of these gifts and also some of my earlier life, the science and the technology and the physics, because I, I had a degree in physics. I want to bring that back to people and, and combine it in a way that can help people in the world, you know, serve everybody. So I researched at Stanford. I was lucky enough to be involved in pioneering lucid dreaming research. Uh, that was an exciting time in California and working with world pioneers and lots of press and media. And, Scientifically proving you can be awake, or at least your consciousness can be aware, while you're asleep in bed, while your body's physically asleep. And it was kind of big and made a lot of news to prove that scientifically. The proof is kind of interesting. Would you like to hear about that? Oh, sure. uh, and people like this, not just because it's... The proof it is scientifically is new to me. You know, tell me about it. Steve. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. And it's interesting. Best thing because it sort of helps people trust an experience they may not have had. You can be awake while asleep. Well, that's kind of crazy. You're one or the other, right? No, not true. You can actually be conscious in a dream. 
and experience the whole kind of virtual reality and sometimes even link up with waking life. So in the sleep lab, how we did it was we would put electrodes on the people's eyes. It's called EOG measurement, electrooculogram, and then different electrodes on the head and on the chin. And, and some of the other electrodes would be proving scientifically that the person's fully asleep. They're not just faking it with their eyes closed. You know, low, very low muscle tonus and other brainwave frequencies can prove that they're, you know, normally asleep. And yet, once they become conscious or aware in the dream, and I did this uh, in the Stanford lab too, you can give a prearranged eye signal because it turns out that the eyes aren't under sort of the, the normal off switch of most of the muscles in the body when we sleep. The eyes are available to conscious control. So we do a little left, right, and a little signal. I know your eyes moved when you were dreaming, but I didn't know you could consciously yeah. affect that. Well, that was a leap of understanding that helped to prove it because, let's say, for example, three left, three right with my dream finger, and I follow it with my dream eyes. Don't forget, my body's asleep in bed. But it turns out the physical eyes also follow the dream finger while you're in the dream. And you can measure that with the, the electrooculogram, and you can see a little graph printout going left, right three times. And only maybe one in 10 million are extremely rare that it would just randomly happen. So proof that, hey, the person's conscious. They know they're dreaming. At the time, you do. And then when you wake up, you remember it because you're still in that halfway period yeah, exactly. between, between your subconscious and And you can and tell the story and, sure. and do interesting yeah. research. You can sort of follow the physiology of the dream activity much closer because now you know when the person's doing a certain experiment or what have you. I've been able to go back to the dream and visit the dream uh, in a Already. meditation, when when I'm awake in an awake state, go into a meditative mode and then go back and visit the dream and change it in order to heal a certain part maybe that was yeah, scary powerful. or if there was a bad emotion that was making me feel ill, I've been able to heal that that way. But that's probably just peanuts to someone as deep as you. So tell me more about that. What did you do? Anything? Well, some of the research, uh, it was academic, so there was different questions like, hey, when we do a dreamed activity, is the body physiology following the same as it would as if we were doing the waking activity? Oh. Obviously, the muscles are kind of mostly turned off, but let's say is the heart rate or the brain waves, the different yeah. functions in the brain or the breathing, etc., is that following what it would in waking life? And the results showed that it was true, except for the major muscles. Our dream body is following the, the dreamed activity, and the, and the physiology in our sleeping body is also following the same as it would pretty much as if we were awake. So it more or less proves something that other research showed, that we can actually be training and learning new skills, practicing different, I guess, physical skills, and also later uh, the research showed we can be learning new knowledge in our dream that will actually be re retained in our waking life. We know our muscles learn it, and our neurons and our brain patterns learn the things in dreams, and then we can play them out better. In fact, lots of experts nowadays think that uh, we're learning to walk and talk as we grow up, mostly in our dreams. So it's true that you could play this recording in a foreign language and learn it in your sleep, or not? Uh, well, somewhat. It depends a little bit when the language comes. Certainly the intention can be uh, helpful because uh, you might have tried this yourself. Have you ever slept on a problem or had an intention or a question before sleep? Well, certainly, uh, yes, and I know yeah, that it, most folks have you, done that. you solve the problem during your sleep and you wake up and you've got the yeah, idea. Yeah, and you can actually use a whole different, deeper aspect of the mind. Yeah. Also, I can get And so it, it helps us... It, Go ahead. Yeah, sometimes you can be a little more tired depending how well you focus and what your exact phraseology is, and depending on your little intention or suggestion. Is. Gosh, and how difficult the problem is. Although there's not really any order of difficulty in the magic of the creative subconscious. It's more just are we ripe and also will we use the results productively and to help people or will we kind of take advantage of something or, or do something that may not be in our best interests, you know. If it was just uh, dream the winning lottery numbers, there'd be a lot of rich psychics and dreamers out there. <laughs> Well, you have to test your dream results with your conscious mind, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's good to act on them. In fact, you, you, you sort of connect with the point I like to share about. I encourage people not just to ask an important question, what does my dream mean, so that they can understand intellectually a little bit. But even more encompassing is to ask a question and then explore a little bit. What does my dream want? Yeah. And even the question itself will bring different insights, but it might bring us to waking action so that the gifts from our dreams come and serve us and other people in physical reality. I like that. That's where the rubber meets the road and dreams become real. So I encourage people to ask, what does my dream want? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the question I, I've used a lot is, what did it feel like? Because I was taught that the deepest part of your mind is the emotional, where your emotions are. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, very good. Uh, well, I don't know if that's the deepest part of your mind, but it's definitely a very huge portion of what we're after in life. I, sh I guess I yeah, should yeah. say the dream. The whole feeling system, the limbic system, and different parts of the brain. But the, the feeling is very good. So you've heard right there, Dorothy. Uh, I've been sort of speaking and teaching about that for about two decades, so maybe some of that percolated into what you've heard. But it's kind of a natural thing. If you think about it in life, the thing that we're always after whenever we take any action or speak anything or, or, or don't speak or stay still or ignore or don't answer that email, the thing we're always after is a certain feeling. People don't really realize that. So in this case, the dreams are usually speaking speaking in visual language, sometimes sound or smell or other sensations, but usually mostly visual, it's speaking about feelings. So it's kind of a language for our feelings. So I think you have a pretty accurate technique there. Connect with the feeling from the dream. Talk a little bit about this uh, idea of connecting your music with your dreams, or it's your dreams inspiring your music. Oh, thanks for that intro. Actually, probably some of the listeners dream in music, some of the viewers here. About 2 to 3%, depending on the population, people dream in sound and music. Do you ever remember having musical or sound dreams? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you've had a couple. I, 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 I think it's kind of rare, so that's good. I, well, I think of music all the time, all day long. There's always a song. Oh, okay. That, I don't know if that's... Is that rare? Because you got I, your own inner radio station there. Yeah, I thought everybody <laughs> did that, but I'm not sure. See, because I'm a musician as well. No, it's not as common as you might think. I'm always. It is more common for. Uh, well, it is more common for people who've developed their intuition. You know, we have this word, the muse, the inner voice, and so that will play out in the audio channel as well as the visual dreams. So if you've developed your intuition and done a lot of healing, it's all you'll the notice. Time, like, you know, everyone must have thoughts uh. going all the time, and my thoughts are going, but also behind that Melodies. Music, music is playing all the time. Oh, beautiful. So tell me. Well, so uh, you, you got your own about. soundtrack for your life. Yeah, I've never. Well, I've had me. that myself. Okay, go on. I'm uh, blessed to wake up, I'd say, at least every week with uh, usually a new melody, sometimes uh, just a few lyrics from uh, well-known melodies. But I'll wake up with new sounds or melodies, or occasionally I'll wake up with different ways to arrange music or sort of soundscapes or special effects. One time I remember I woke up with a very interesting reverb on my ears. <laughs> I just heard everything, uh, my partner snoring loudly, and it was kind of, and I thought it was very strange. It only lasted a few minutes, but I, I realized, wow, maybe that's given me a hint for the composition I was working on at the time. Make it a little richer, sounding like a church or a large room to add some reverb. Have and if done, nothing else, it was kind of a neat experience. Have you done soundtracks for movies? Uh, I've worked on film soundtracks and also for video and TV, yes. Uh, I'm really grateful about that because it's such a joy to be creatively absorbed. I mean, this is where the, the rubber hits the road for dreams. Have you ever heard this song? It kind of goes something like, scrambled eggs, oh my baby, how I love your legs. Have you heard that? <laughs> No, but now I have. Uh, you'll forgive me for the for the kind of I'm going off key a little bit on purpose. Oh, 
<laughs> well, uh, a gentleman woke with this melody, and uh, he thought it sounded really familiar and that he'd stolen it from somewhere, so he asked his friends and relatives, and I guess even his business partners, have you guys ever heard this? <laughs> because I think I took it. And they laughed at the lyrics, you know, scrambled eggs, baby, how I love your legs. It's kind of funny. You're going to have to change the lyrics if you want to develop it, because this person was a musician, too. So it took about a month which is interesting, and then he eventually owned it. And I said, okay, this is mine, and I'll develop it. And shortly after, he actually dreamt the title. You know, once he kind of owned it and took it as his own, he dreamt the title, which you probably have heard, Yesterday. And he realized that would be the new lyrics. All my troubles seem so far away. Oh. So that came to Paul McCartney in a dream. The, the whole melody and I guess the title also. And obviously he's a great musician and he crafted the rest of the song. But his other big hits, I guess number one of the Beatles' top hits, perhaps their second biggest, was uh, Let It Be, which was also inspired by a dream. His mother Mary came to him and was giving him a uh, little, I guess, advice at the time when the Beatles were parting. Hey, let it be, you know. <laughs> his mother's name is Mary. Mother Mary says to me, right? Not just the virgin, but his actual mom. Isn't this? So amazing? he turns his, I guess, dreams into beautiful art. And I've been blessed, perhaps not as much as Sir McCartney, but to, to turn some of my melodies into music. And they've been airing on, well, I think over 150, maybe a couple hundred radio stations at this point. Oh. And I don't think they're particularly amazing, but there seems to be a special kind of magic to these, quote unquote, nocturnal thoughts or these inspirations that come direct sort of as we wake up. Obviously, it helps with our creativity during the day, but when we get that kind of direct melody, maybe it holds a special spark, kind of like Paul's Yesterday did, or, or like James Cameron. He actually has dreamt the, the two key ideas for, I guess, his first breakout movie, Terminator, and then Avatar, which is the number one grossing movie. He had two dreams. Well, actually, he had one dream, and his mom had a dream that inspired that whole movie. So some of these key thoughts can really turn out big later if we apply and use our, I guess, our gifts and skills to create, create them and craft them. Great creativity lies. Now, do you, do yeah, you believe the that, source? Do you believe that you're connecting with the uh, universe or with? Uh, the afterlife or other souls when you're dreaming? Yeah, I guess it depend, depends on what language the person I'm speaking with would use. I kind of enjoy being a translator. <laughs> and so one language would be afterlife, death, souls. One that I like and it's kind of maybe more for the hip generation, and it seems like you'll, you'll get this one, is I think of dreaming generally as kind of like an inner net. There's no T in that word. It sort of has available to us lots of information, and we can connect with other people, kind of like a Skype or an Uvo here. Or we can sort of pick up on other people through, like, inner email or checking their inner website and see what's going on, so telepathy. And sometimes we can tune into the collective unconscious of future events that uh, are sort of gelling in people's minds. And, you know, the how of it becomes mysterious at some point, but uh, more interesting is what can we do with it? Can we help people? Can we serve our, our creative gifts? And can we basically have more fun and, and use some of our God-given talents? Yes, we definitely can. And anybody who tries to develop some of these inner skills or gifts simply has to start connecting with the Internet. Just remember your dreams a little bit. So uh, when you were speaking a minute ago, it was as if you were talking about connecting with living people through the subconscious or through the dreams. But when you talked about Paul McCartney and his mother Mary, I took it that she had passed on. Or am I, was I wrong about that? Mm. Yeah, I believe so at that time. Okay. And certainly, uh, just like maybe a website could be left up after someone passes on or after a company closes or after someone's moved on to something else, okay. I think there's some deep connection and imprint or maybe some actual living portion of our, let's say, deeper subconscious, our soul, whatever you want to call it, our spirit, our psyche. And that we can connect certainly with our love for the person. 
So people say, is that really the person that I met? Sometimes we're meeting sort of a symbol of the person, but many times I believe we're actually connecting on the Internet with that person. Don't forget in dreams there's no time, right? Our physical senses are turned off when we sleep and dream. And so we don't have to follow the, the dictates or the limitations of waking physical time. So we can pick up on their true essence, which is always alive before and after their death or in their previous life or in their next life. And, we can tune into even our own, let's say, future, past lives. Lots of amazing things there if we if we start tapping the inner net. <laughs> now I'm going to see how far I can push you on this. Do you believe you can connect right, push with me animals? <laughs> animals, pets? Dogs? Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> that absolutely. Was... Did you have a pet you've connected with or that you'd no, like to? No, no, I was just oh. wondering because you, you've got this ability. Do you have pets? Or have you? Yeah, I mean, one example you might find kind of interesting, and I don't know, it sort of became a lesson for me about letting go and release uh, our family dog that everybody was quite fond of, passed on at one point. And I was in California, because I grew up in Montreal, most of my family's in Montreal at the time, but uh, I was on the West Coast time, and I dreamt of, just after I heard that the dog had passed, I dreamt of our dog kind of running around a little bit lost in sort of a bit of a maze, and my deceased grandparents were there trying to help her and kind of get her away. But there was some kind of force pulling her back, and I sort of noticed my... I guess my, a couple members of my family there. And so when I woke up, I, I guess I have some experience with dreams and some of these principles. So I phoned Montreal and said, hey, are you guys uh, still missing or longing or really thinking a lot about our, our dog? And they said yes, and so I offered some empathy. I didn't want to just analyze or correct or tell them they were wrong. So I listened and, you know, kind of offered a really friendly ear for a while because it's not an easy thing to lose someone or even an animal we love. And then I encouraged them, told them the dream, and said it would be really helpful, I think, for her spirit to kind of move forward or graduate past some kind of middle plane there if you would do your best to kind of let go for now. And certainly the love will linger on and live on, but just let her form go so she can kind of move to the next level. So mm. there's a connection with a pet. There you go. A lot of people love their pets more than anything. Um, Absolutely. I, when you were talking about the essence that people leave behind when they um, leave a place, I used I, I worked in a particular church in a city for seven years, and then I left that place. And later on, probably ten years later, my next-door neighbor and I were getting acquainted, and she told me about her experience of going into that church, and she sensed my essence being there. Now, this person wow. was very connected, wasn't she? I guess she's tuned in, right? She's got her inner radio kind of tuned in well. But she could tell I had been That's there nice. before I ever told her that I worked there. Huh. That, well, seven years, you know, Dorothy, that is a natural cycle for events. So probably a good chunk of your being or your soul or your, let's say, energy was still there. You know, the seven-year cycle... Uh, have you ever heard of Saturn return and, and the larger cycles, these kind of things, the seven-year itch in relationships sometimes well, it's called? The, the number seven is it's kind of a, natural a big phase. number in the, in the Bible, of course. Yeah, right, right. It's very, so it's a natural cycle of completion or if we choose to continue, then moving to the next level on something. That's so why some I relationships stayed, end after seven or 14, but they could go to the next level if we choose it. Tim? I've stayed 10 years in a couple of places. Maybe that was too long, huh? Oh, okay. About time to get out. Oh, well, I don't think you have to exactly line up with seven years every time. Okay. <laughs> but okay. if you start a project or start a relationship or just in your own life since your birth, you'll notice big events. For example, you can check the listeners or viewers here can say, hey, what happened when I was about 28 and usually pretty close to my birthday? And I'll guess, I'll make a guess here because 28 is a big one, four sevens. And that is probably you got married or started a whole new career or maybe had a big spiritual awakening or maybe had a really upsetting accident if you kind of went uh, under the wave because there's a big wave of kind of completion when we're 28. Do you remember what happened when you were 28 or maybe 56 because that would be two times? Uh, not offhand. Maybe move to a new place. That's Could've. another big thing. Could've. Big move. I'd have to go back and check. 
You'd have to check, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, people usually find if one or two or three big, big events around 28. And then the seven-year cycles are a little bit smaller, but we'll usually see a transition at those. Let's see if I could think 28. Probably that would be when I, ha I had a baby that year. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's pretty big. <laughs> Hopefully the baby wasn't too physically big. It was a peaceful birth. Very. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. Congratulations. So I guess uh, <laughs> th this person is a wonderful, uh, I guess, grown-up by now. She is grown-up now, and she... it's the most amazing person that I've ever met. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, wow. what are you, do you have any um, tips for our viewers? Sure. Well, I guess one of the first things that people might be interested in if they don't have too much recall, if the door isn't really fully open, if you'd like to connect more with the Internet and link up with your dreams, I guess a couple tips would be in order. First off, check the website of the Nonprofit Dreams Foundation that I direct at dreams.ca. And you'll see lots of great tips there for recalling dreams. And there's a whole podcast all about understanding, interpreting dreams. If you join the tips and events newsletter, really? there's tips for lucid dreaming. Uh, but I'll just give a couple now so that okay. people can, you know, not necessarily have to run off to, to dreams.ca right, right during the interview here. If you want to recall dreams a little better, just make sure to keep your physical senses as low as possible because dreams mostly come in on another channel. We could call it the intuitive channel. Really, it's kind of the same thing as our intuition. It's coming from a non-physical source and it usually carries lots of guidance. So keeping the physical senses low means try to keep our eyes closed when we wake up. That's probably the biggest one. Or if we open them, just close them again. Oh, yeah. Try to keep our body stationary. Don't move. Mm -hmm. Or if we move, roll back or move back or tilt our head back to the same position we woke up in. That'll help mm -hmm. a lot because our whole body dreams, not just our brain. And then I guess try not to wake up to an alarm. There's kind of a neat technique. Maybe you've tried this, Dorothy. You can actually set your intention, or what I call your body clock, to wake up at any fixed time that you like. And then you can set your alarm when you actually have to get up. But maybe set your body clock 15 minutes before the alarm. You don't have to have that annoying beep, 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 beep. And you can also remember your dreams peacefully and kind of gently awaken rather than a bit of a shock awakening that many times comes with the alarm. Have you done the body clock or the intention thing? Mm, no, but I have. Never tried that. Uh, I've tried using prayer before I went to sleep to pray over a particular problem that I wanted to dream about yeah. to uh, seek solutions. And then uh, at the time I was doing this, I was pretty good at remembering my dreams after I woke up, but as soon as I was awake, okay, I would write them down. I would, and just as fast as I could, Very just good. everything I could remember about the dream. And that would help. I think people, sure. people, my experience in doing workshops with people is that there is a certain amount of caution and that an, I would have to use and people that might be um, emotionally disturbed if they get too far into this without guidance from a professional or a trained person, it, could, it can be kind of dangerous because they might be digging up things that would require help. Yeah, especially if they sort of uh, are a little more sometimes extreme or gamblers or have really thin boundaries like sensitive people. You can sometimes end up a little crazier than not if you... And I always say one of the most important techniques I share for becoming more aware, lucid, or remembering, and then starting to participate in real time in lucid dreams is for people to stay grounded. That's one of the most important techniques. In other words, sleep really well on a normal schedule, eat really well, especially if things start getting all connected or going a little crazy. Maintain social contact, you know, stay out of doors, do good hikes, biking, whatever, and stay connected with your physical body. And that will actually be the roots that allow your tree to grow even farther into the heavens of amazing explorations. Because without roots, I think like you mentioned, Dorothy, our tree might blow over or bad, worse things might happen. So 
Definitely an encouragement, and it's great to have a guide. If we're going to a strange country, there's a new language, like the language of dreams. Why not have a guide? It saves us lots of time. We can see great things on a maybe a smaller, more efficient budget. So I offer teleclasses that help to guide people uh, for lucid dreaming and what I call lucid living. Not yeah. just our dreams, but how to apply them and live the, the dream of life even more fully, richly, and fulfilling. Okay. Tell our, tell our viewers again where to find your website. Oh, yeah. So people who want to go a little deeper and find some great free tips and techniques, check out dreams.ca, www.dreams.ca. And if you would like to speak more directly with me, you can visit Craig Webb. Two B's on there, C R A I G W E B B dot C A, and you can email me or see some of the events that I have on there. And that, so they can learn a whole lot more about your work by going to this particular website and connecting with you. Um, sure. One last question uh, Do you have any comments about nightmares? Oh, nightmares. Probably lots of the viewers here have had a nightmare. Usually about one and two in the last month have experienced something pretty upsetting in their dreams. Maybe, maybe a bad dream. Little kids say, I didn't have a nightmare, I had a bad dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, whatever language you use, probably something that uh, I would classify as a gift. So I say, maybe bitter, maybe unpleasant, but actually a necessary medicine. Kind of like an oil light on our car. We're not too happy when it starts bleeping at us, but we don't put a Band-Aid over it or ignore it because otherwise, you know, it's going to be really expensive in 100 miles. Oh. Like the smoke alarm on our house, the, the nightmares say, hey, something's out of balance or something at risk here. And listen, listen, listen. That's why it's a loud, upsetting dream. And usually a warning of something that could get worse in our life, like maybe we'll lose our job or a relationship breakup or sometimes a health problem. New research shows that cancer is usually uh, comes in our nightmares before a few years before it shows up in our body. So oh. usually stuff that can be avoided if we can listen. So they are gifts. We don't want people to have more nightmares, but we don't want people to ignore them. So nightmares, lucky you. You can check out the article at dreams.ca. They sh they should really understand what the what the nightmare means because it could be very frightening. And absolutely, and also recurring. Yeah, if keeps listen. coming. Yeah. Back for it, many people. It can uh, also reflect some emotion that you've had that day. If you've had some negative emotions that you've suppressed, they can come out in the dream, can't they? As a night, you know, uh, night absolutely. Night. In fact, like mm -hmm. you said, most of the feelings come in our dreams. And there'll usually be a specific lesson why the event happened that day. But a deeper lesson why that event showed up in our life generally. And that's probably what the nightmares are after. Probably an early trauma and there's different ways of going about the nightmares. Usually when they started if they're a recurring series of dreams sometimes a recurring theme and not the exact same dream. Like a chase dream or like falling or being naked in public is another funny one that people <laughs> have. Usually when it first started uh, that upsetting scenario is a bit of a hint to when uh, an upsetting event happened that we haven't integrated or, or maybe a death we haven't grieved or maybe a lesson we haven't learned yet. And that's one of the things we explore in the teleclasses because I usually see lots of nightmares in the first couple of weeks and then people start, when I say, clearing the backlog of stuff that hasn't been dealt with. And then lots of creative dreams, lucid dreams, and fun stuff happens once we clear the backlog and, and listen to the nightmares and heal this stuff. Are there certain symbols that come in dreams that are common, uh, like, as you said, uh, the feeling of running away and you're trying to make your feet move, but they're locked in cement and you can't move, or oh, yeah. flying, feeling Stuck like, in slow motion. Or... Yeah. Are there certain symbols that have meaning, water or things? Can you Absolutely. Name? Name a few. I like to say that uh, every symbol or every action element in a dream has a universal aspect and it's kind of a spectrum from a universal level to a very personal level. So sometimes like a dream dictionary will be useful, many times it won't because it might be somebody else's personal level. Mm -hmm. But if we look more towards the general themes and the archetypes and the common symbols, then it can be very helpful. For example, the water, you tapped on a big one. One here, one of the four elements of everything on earth, liquid at least, is uh, emotions, feelings, fluidity. That's why we have ocean, because it's kind of
kind of like emotion. <laughs> Sometimes it's frozen as ice. You know, are we in touch with our feelings? Are they kind of gelled? Or maybe uh, we're having rain, and is it really coming too much? Is it a tidal wave? Am I being overwhelmed by something in my life? Uh, lots of other symbols, too. Usually stuff like uh, the themes that come as a big recurring dream, the chase dream. That's a very big one. I have an interesting story of someone who ended the chase dream forever, if you'd like okay, me to share that. Tell it. Tell us. If we have time here. Well, yeah, well, sure. Get in a Mimi was a client I worked with, which is kind of an interesting name. Uh, Mimi. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she had this recurring chase dream, a pursuit, which actually research shows probably about four out of five of our listeners have also had at some point, and, and many people still, still have it. And so Mimi had this, and a few things. One is she'd wake up really upset, kind of uh, just almost escaping, but with the pursuer right behind her. Yeah. And she also said it would leave her tired because she didn't sleep so well and kind of ruin her day at the office, the feeling and the tiredness. Yeah. So she wanted to put an end to that. And she, in this case, chose lucid dreaming. That's one of the techniques. Or be becoming aware during the dream and shifting the dream. Uh, there's other ways, but uh, she chose that, and she said, next time I have this dream, I'm going to wake up or become aware during the dream and do something new. I'm going to change it in real time, in the dream. And uh, she reported, I guess a couple weeks or so later, that she had the same dream. This time the pursuer hot on her heels but in a car chase, so a little different. And she saw him in the rearview mirror, and she said, oh, my gosh, and pulled into a parking lot, hopped out on foot, now running, running, running. And the pursuer was kind of closing in on her. And she suddenly had that kind of flash of awareness or her intention kind of broke through the forgetfulness barrier that often happens when we fall asleep. And she remembered she was dreaming. She was, oh, yeah, I wanted to do something new. And so she kind of whirled around quickly and said, this is my dream and, and you can't hurt me. And the pursuer, for the first time she saw his face and his eyes and she said, he had loving eyes. And he said, what? Hurts you? I've been running after you this whole time, actually, just to tell you, I love you, but you've been running, so I've been chasing you. What? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. And he took her hands and kind of, I guess the perfect, perfect psychological integration kind of melted into her heart. And a couple interesting things from the practical scientist angle, which I like to keep in mind. She said she woke up really energized, super happy, so no more upset, dread, and ruined feeling kind of wrecked day. And she said she noticed she wasn't tired that day at work. And most importantly, I guess when I checked about a year or so, two years later, she said she never had the nightmare again. Oh, so I, I guess she got the lesson and integrated the gift. I thought you were going to say she met this wonderful man. Oh, she and might have. Married. I didn't follow up later. <laughs> Well, within her, she certainly met, uh, let's say, a male aspect. She, she said she noticed she integrated the skill of kind of standing her ground or whirling around and speaking her truth a little better. At the office, she was a little more assertive and would say, no, that doesn't feel right. Before, she would always just run away. So it ends up being it pretty was, practical, right? It was the stress of, of the job that was she couldn't get away from, and so she finally faced it on, didn't she? Isn't that great? What a uh, well, I think the lesson there is a little different because okay. most upsetting dreams are some kind of stress. But the specific type of thing she wasn't really understanding was she's actually fully safe in the dream. It's a little more obvious because her body's in bed. But it's important to speak her truth and to sort of trust her judgment, trust her creativity, and in this case, have a little more confidence. And so instead of running away from things that seem scary emotionally, she would stand her ground a little more. So yeah, I guess that would help her resolve stress, but in a pretty specific way, kind of assertiveness, personal yeah. power, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this has been a delightful interview. I, our time is up today, and I would like to thank you so uh, much. That happens for kind of like when our sleep ends, right? Yeah. So, uh, Craig Sim Webb, nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed our time, Dorothy. I appreciate you having me on and uh, giving a chance to share some of these gifts with all the viewers. So, Good luck. Hope they check out the website and learn more of these wonderful things that are available on the Internet. I think they will. Goodbye now. Thank you.